Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Mindful Bit Cracking the Coding Interview video series. Today, we're going to be taking a deep dive into 1.4 palindrome permutations. I'm your host, Corey, and uh, founder creator of Mindful Bit. This is a space where mindfulness and technology meet. And if you're here, I'm assuming you're getting ready for a job interview. So you'll find this book, Cracking the Coding Interview, to be particularly helpful for you. And I hope that you find the rest of the videos in this playlist helpful to kind of get you up to speed on some different programming paradigms, um, some nuances that uh, interviewers might be looking for, and really just to help sharpen your skills uh, for that interview process. So without further ado, we'll dive right into palindrome permutations. If this is your first video here, we kind of will just go through the question together. I'll code it up, we'll do, run some tests on it, make sure everything works and really just discuss what's going on. So I'll be using IntelliJ as my IDE here. We're gonna create a new package called four. So we've got 1.4 here. And in here we're gonna create a new Java class. And what we're gonna do is call this palindrome permutation. Okay, if you have the book, that's great, but if you don't, that's fine too, because I'll be typing out the question here so that we all have it. It'll also be in the description. <clears throat> Given a string, <coughs> excuse me. Given a string, write a function to check if it is a permutation of a palindrome. A permutation of a palindrome. A palindrome is a word or phrase that is the same forwards and backwards. A permutation is a rearrangement of letters. The palindrome does not need to be limited to dictionary words. So that is the question. That's question 1.4 in the Cracking the Coding interview book. And if at first it feels a little overwhelming, that's fine. But I want you to take a moment and realize that everything you need to solve this problem is in the question. Let's say you came into this question and it was an interview and you didn't know what a palindrome was or you didn't know what a permutation was. Well, the definition of those is right inside of the question itself. And typically in an interview, that might be the case or it may not be the case. Perhaps the interviewer will intentionally leave out information to see if you're willing to ask and take time up front to question and gather more details and data and get everything you need to make sure you're able to successfully answer the question. So keep that in mind. Sometimes the question will have everything you need. Sometimes it won't, but never be afraid to ask. Don't let your ego get in the way. If you're worried that, oh, I should know what a permutation is, you're really going to, you know, you're really going to hinder yourself. That's fine. The reality is you don't. And so ask. Say, hey, interviewer, can you just give me a refresher on what a permutation is or what a palindrome is? But for this question, we do have it right inside definitions of a palindrome and uh, permutation right inside of the question itself. So if you want to take a moment here and pause the video and think about how you might solve this, I encourage you to, to do that right now. Otherwise, I'm going to kind of discuss a solution that we can use here and the solution and I'll read the solution that's in the book. So right now, here's a good chance to pause. All right, if you're still here, here we go with the solution. I'll read it first and then put it in my own words. This is a question where it helps to figure out what it means for a string to be a permutation of a palindrome. This is like asking what the defining features of such a string would be. A palindrome is a string that is the same forwards and backwards. Therefore, to decide if a string is a permutation of a palindrome, we need to know if it can be written such that it's the same forwards and backwards. What does it take to be able to write a set of characters the same way forwards and backwards? We need to have an even number of almost all characters so that half can be on one side and half can be on the other side. 
At most, one character, the middle character, can have an odd count. So that is the solution. Basically taking a look at the string itself and counting the characters, making sure that we only have a single odd character and that the rest are even. So that solution, to get there, you really had to take a look at the string itself and think, okay, looking at this string, what do I notice about it? And so you start to notice some characteristics about the string. You start to notice, oh, what are the patterns of a palindrome? And how can I use those patterns to solve this particular question? And so it's really helpful to look at an example, to take, take an example and, you know, in the book we have this as an example for the input. T-A-C-T-C-O-A. -T -C right? So you can say, okay, that's the input. And the output of the function is going to be true. And here are the permutations. Taco cat. That goes CTA, etc. You know. So it's really helpful with these to write down and have the interviewer write down uh, an example input and output for you so that you can take a look at the input and begin to notice patterns about it. You want to be very careful here, though, and don't make any assumptions based on um, a small sample of input, right? They'll probably only give you one input, but you need to consider different types of input. Empty string, right? Strings that are longer. And, you know, and I'm just saying these off the top of my head. But you want to consider not just the input they give you. You want to think outside the box. Yes, solve for the input they give you as phase one. Say, hey, I'm going to solve specifically for this input. And, and potentially some things will come up to me at the end of the question that I can kind of make my function more robust. Um, but just have an open mind and then consider different inputs here. But here is a really good example because you can take a look at the input and see, okay, I've got two T's, I've got two C's, I've got two A's, and a single O. And what can I come up with as a pattern to solve? And so if you do enough examples of that, you'll realize in order for it to be a palindrome, it has to, there has to be a pivot. You know, the single letter in the center has to be a pivot. And then everything else has to be mirrored. If you can see from Taco Cat, O is the pivot, then you start mirroring C and C, A and A, T and T. So really this question is about how you can take a look at input, find defining characteristics of that input and that data set, and come up with ways to generate the appropriate output. So I think that's enough on kind of the theory. Now let's solve the problem. So I'm going to code up the answer here. We're going to write a function called is permutation of palindrome. That's going to take in a string phrase. We're going to have a counter here for our odd count. We're going to set up a table array. And that's going to be an array of character dot get numeric values z minus character dot get numeric value of a plus one so here we're setting up our table to contain every possible letter so we've got a, a, a integer array that's going to represent how many characters that we have in the alphabet. Now we're going to iterate here over each letter in the phrase that's passed in. Integer x equals get char number of c. Okay. That'll be another function that we define. If x is not equal 
to negative 1. We're going to update our table at x. If table at x modulo 2, so if the remainder is 1, which means it's odd, we're going to count odd plus plus. Else, count odd minus minus. Okay? And what we're going to return here is count of odd. So there's our main function is permutation. Let's go ahead and write our get char number. This is going to map each character to a number. A to 0, B to 1, C to 2, etc. This is just a helper function here that takes in a character. And we're going to do character dot get numeric value of A. We're going to do character dot get numeric value of Z. We're going to do character dot get numeric value of A. And we're going to do character dot get numeric value of Z, capital Z. Now we're going to do integer value equals character dot get numeric character dot get numeric value of character. So we're going to get the value, the numeric value of the passed in character. If A is less than or equal to value and value is less than or equal to Z, return value minus A. So if it's lowercase, else if A is less than or equal to value and value is less than or equal to Z, we're going to return value minus A. And then if nothing, we'll return negative 1. So that's going to basically get the character number representation of our letter here. OK. So let's check our error here and see what's going on. Uh, count odd. We want to return count odd, which is defined as a Boolean here. Let's go ahead and once again, this is straight out of the book. So we're returning a Boolean, except we're, we have it defined as a Boolean return type, but what we're returning is an integer. So what we want to return is if return count odd greater than one. Okay. Uh, count odd equals one. Okay, so we want to return if count odd is exactly one because that's the only situation in which um, the word is a permutation of a palindrome. Okay, so that is one of the solutions. And let's run some Let's run some tests on it. We'll write a main here and we'll write our string. Let's do the input up here. T-A-C-T C-O-A for taco cat string string input equals okay and then let's just print print line the is permutation. Uh, let's make this static so we can access it. Input. All right, let's run. Let's run this bad boy and see what happens.
and we get a failure because we need to make this public static as well and let's run and we need to select the actual class here all right here we go true so we get the true value here let's add an extra letter of a let's see what happens we get faults let's do race car everyone's favorite race car which should get true even if we swap these letters around we should still get true if I did it right race car okay and then swap the C and the A A and the C should still get true so there's a solution to question 1.4 permutations I the main takeaway that I want you to take from this is examining input data to come up with characteristics and patterns that will allow you to solve the problem that is I can't stress enough how important that is because you might even see patterns from the data the input data that the interviewer didn't even notice that that allows you to write code that is more efficient um, this is where pattern recognition and problem solving really comes in handy so thank you so much for another mindful bit cracking the coding interview let me know in the comments if this is helpful if you would like to hear more theory if, if me coding it is beneficial Please don't be shy. Um, I do want to make my way through the book. Um, so would love to hear your feedback and if this is helpful at all um, or anything else you might um, be curious about. So thanks again. Once again, this is Corey Kelly, Mindful Bit, Cracking the Coding Interview. And I'll speak with you again on the next one. Bye-bye.